without using the nomenclature so that it's clear what it's saying. Uh, the P1, like the if a proposition P0 is true and that PN being true imply PN yeah. plus 1 being true. Yeah, just rewrite that without using the nomenclature because the nomenclature is extremely muddled. It's not clear what it's saying. Uh, okay, so you like... Um... Uh, okay, okay, I can try to do that. Because uh, like, is this like uh, an issue with uh, P1 by itself, or like just? Uh... Oh no, I'm just, I haven't even gotten to the rest of the argument. I can't understand <laughs> okay, P1. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let me try to see if I can. So you, that. your challenge here is going to be to actually condense all of these premises down, or translate them, or whatever. Somehow make them into something comprehensible. And for that comprehensible thing to be a sound argument, which somehow shows name the trade as unsound. So that that's your goal here. So just start with P1. Yeah, yeah. Like uh, I'm just thinking where to start because like um, P1. Like yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <I do. laughs> that would be good. <laughs> yeah, within P1, I don't know where to start. <laughs> okay. So uh, fuck. Let me find the English word. Uh, is that yeah for like um, it's like uh, the mathematical induction. Like I don't know if you uh, just write it. If you're aware, if you just write it, just write it in English, and let me let me understand it. Just just a simple you know premise structured properly. If it's not structured properly, we can you know formalize it. But just give give me any kind of clear reading of that premise. I don't want something I have to keep in my head. I want it on paper so I can see what it says. Well, or in yeah, so it's it's based on the mathematical induction. So I'm gonna try to find a good definition because I know it in French, but translating it to English is kind of hard. All right, let me let me remove the the push to talk real quick. All right, so at least this is going to be easier. So, um, do you want, where do you want me to type it in uh, general, or? Um, yeah, or throw it in my inbox. It's fine if you put it in my inbox, just so it doesn't start scrolling up when people start typing. Because people are going to be waking up soon. Oh my god! Fucking copy paste is fucked up. All right. Uh, What's your deal anyway? I think I've seen you around the server before. Uh, like I was just talking like to uh, to Shadow Starshine and Magnus and everything, and I no, was like, I mean, uh, I mean, your deal. Like, who are you? Like you? Oh, have you, uh, you've been here for a while, right? Yeah, kinda. I had a second account that I memed a bit too much <laughs> that got banned. <laughs> I, um, I posted Weeb's SMH and then some mods banned me. Oh, it's just the, sad. the sad death of your other account. Yeah, um, you much. know, you know, I debated that guy Magnus once, right? Yeah, but like, like, I watched the debate like on YouTube, and it felt like kind of unsatisfying because like, I agree, especially for me since like uh, French is my mother tongue and English is not just mm -hmm. it's not my first language. Like for me, it's much easier when, against an, uh, when I want to understand an argument to go through syllogism, and it mm -hmm. felt like your discussion was like, "Can you give me a syllogism, or the discussion is over because I don't see what you mean, and I don't see if there, if there is any sophistry hidden in what you say you're saying." Anyways. Yes, yeah, that that's the position that I take with respect to these sophists because they yeah, want they want they want to capitalize on the ambiguity of natural language to conceal the fact that they don't have any kind of coherent uh, inference going on. So like with Magnus, I simply crushed him by asking for an argument, right? I didn't even ask him to formalize yeah. it. I just said, you know, just give me an argument. And he gave he gave a syllogism the first time. And, you know, it was invalid, but we made it valid. So we had something we could work with. And then it just became very clear once it was valid and it was legible, right? Once it, once it was everything could be understood that, oh, well, you know, what the fuck is the argument for P3? Asked him for that, couldn't deliver it just over and over tried to dodge 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 weasel yeah. weasel weasel and then finally we just had to mute him and say look magnus we'll just mute you and you just sit there and come up with an argument couldn't do it right and he's still welcome to come back we're still waiting on p3 from magnus but yeah that was yeah. my experience with with that 
Are you are you in the camp of people who thinks that um, you should just put up with sophists rambling at you? Or are you in the camp that it's reasonable to ask them for an argument if they've tried to make their point repeatedly and you're having absolutely no fucking idea what they're saying? I usually I ask people to make syllogism just be, just to be sure what I'm disagreeing with. Because usually you disagree with someone and well, you don't Well, I don't always why. ask for a syllogism. I ask for a syllogism if we've gone back and forth for a while and I don't know what's being said. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm currently doing it at the same time. I'm just correcting the copy-paste from Wikipedia. And, I, I mean, to be fair, with this topic in general, at this point I ask for syllogisms, at least if it's from one of the sort of known entities. All right, let me check if there is no... no, 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 no. Yeah, what up, Bryn? I'm just, right. we're, we're trying to understand P, P1 of this argument. So the simplest and most oh. common form of mathematical induction infers a statement that involving a natural number that is higher. Uh, than yeah, okay. One yeah, second. Yeah, yeah. No, no, one second. A statement involving a natural number n, that is an integer, uh, n is greater than or equal to zero, holds for all values of n. The proof consists in two steps. The initial base case, proven that the system, that the statement holds for zero or one, the induction step. Um, I don't understand how this relates to name the trade. What I want is for you to give me the first premise of uh, this argument you typed at me about name the trade. P1 uh, out there. Okay. Just so, translate that premise into English. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just the thing the thing that's already frustrating me is I didn't ask for a definition of mathematical induction. I asked for okay. you to take the first premise yeah. and make it something I can understand. So just take another shot at that. Hey, so I feel like uh, the like the deduction tree, like when you say a given human trait is quite trait equal, equal is able to a given non-human animal while in moral value, and like the small video, you the small like if with a trait, trait right, swapping are, animation. Sorry, I, I just I don't understand. Are you are you giving me? Are you writing up the premise right now, or are you just talking about some random thing? I'm trying to explain it with words. But well, just like, I, I mean uh, I I'm sorry, but I've just I've asked repeatedly. What I want is for you to write it out. Right? I just want you to write out premise one in such a way that I can understand it. Yeah, but that's why I'm trying to talk so to see what right. you well, get. In the I can, well, take, I can yeah, just, maybe just write, write it. Yeah. yeah, just write it. I'm glad that we're at the level of sophistry where we're using mathematical induction. This was a fun one to read this morning. Well, yeah, I mean, I just, I think that once the first premise is just written out in a clear form, it'll be obvious whether it's true or not. So right now I just yeah. can't make sense of it. So we just want to get a clear P1 there. I'm, I'm unsure about what you don't understand. Could you like try to... Oh, uh... I, I mean, I can't even isolate it. I have no fucking idea. I can't make sense <laughs> okay. of it. Like when I, I mean, I look when I try to read through it, I go, if a proposition p zero is true, and I take p zero to be, you know, it's some proposition about the human. I guess this fucking definitions here is muddled. It's talking about a zero, but I'm just yeah. guessing if it has a zero, it's supposed to be about the human. Yes. So it's like if a proposition about the human is true, and that p n, which is the proposition about the human, and that n plus 1 equals n, I mean, I, yeah, I'm just lost there. So what you need to do okay. is you need to take that and you need to just condense it down into simple language that I can easily understand. Okay, so uh, do you like, do you want me to I'm, actually type I'm, it or like, we yes. can try to see if okay. Yes, I want you to type it for like, not to be rude, but for oh, like the 10th uh, okay. time, <laughs> All right? right? So... And this, this is the thing, right, is that I don't, I don't know really, like, I don't know what your deal is. I don't know if you're one of the sophists or if you're, you know, a non-soft, but 
the whole thing about these sophists is that they want to capitalize on ambiguity, right? If they can throw out a bunch of natural language without a clear inference structure, they'll love that. If they can throw out a bunch of nomenclature that's just not clear, they'll do that. So the ultimate kryptonite for sophists, like this at least, is just to ask for clarity. And once you make that P1 into something I can understand, I'll be able to tell you if I agree with it or not. And we'll just go through the whole argument like that. Yeah. And I, I've never had one of their arguments not be obviously flawed. Every time I do this, it just crumbles at some point. Yep. So right now we're just trying to get an understanding of P1. Yeah, just wait till we get to argument two. If we get to argument two. Do you understand I, what you understand I mean by uh, A1, A2, AN or not? Or do I need to explain that? A1, A2, AN. Um, not really. Like, is A1 just like the animal? Or A0 is the human? A1 is like is like the human with a modification. Like, here, what we'll yeah. use what we'll yeah. use is the terminology that we normally use. Um, so if you want to talk about the being in world one, you can just if you want to use A, you can use A, that's fine. Then world two is A prime, then world three is A prime, 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 etc. So just use that terminology. Okay, sure. Uh, okay. Uh, it's, it's pretty much this. It's like a, a prime, a second, ns, and so on. Yo, ends up. We're dealing with some fresh soft. Did you see the um? Did you see the the giant thing that showed up in my inbox this morning? I took some time to do it. No, what do what do you want? Well, the first argument is to put name the trait in the form of a discrete induction. And then the second argument is to <laughs> to beg the question against name the trait. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't, I don't, I'm still stuck on what it's even saying in sub. Yeah. So, so, so what, yeah. what we're trying to do right now, today, Balame, who's this guy we were talking to right now, he's been interacting with the softs. It's not clear if he's one of them yet, so we're going to talk to him and find out. Um, but he has written up this syllogism from the softs, and um, it's very unclear what it says. So right now, we're just trying to understand P1. That's been the task for... Since I've, since I've read this, which was like an hour ago at this point, and we've been in VC for like maybe like 10 minutes or something. Wait, uh, can I see it? Yeah, just scroll up in my inbox, you'll see it. As a you big, know, yeah. Do you know some like introductory discrete math in up? No. Okay, because that's that's what they're trying to do here. Mm, I, can, I mean, I they try to add them. Look at this big text wall. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, this is AIDS. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but but the thing is, the thing is, you just have to just don't worry about the eighth, right? It's like it's going to be extremely convoluted. And they're just going to try to throw information at you that maybe you just haven't seen, like, oh, you know, if they're trying to do something with math. Um, but seriously, all you ever have to do with these arguments is just get clarity. You just have to ask for clarity, 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 and eventually it'll just crumble apart, like all of the sophistry. What is this even saying? I'm just trying to I, read it. I don't I understand. Know. I know. As these variables going around. and goodness me. I like my, 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 fa like? my favorite part is that in premise one, he gives uh, P0 is true as it gives he gives it the atomic variable Q, but then in premise two, yeah, I agree, that, uh, the very... I, I agree that I agree that that might be confusing, yeah, for sure. I just don't understand how you still have not written out what premise one is. Like it's been it's been like ten minutes. Is it that confusing? Just give me a sentence. If this being has value, then all these beings have it. Whatever it's saying, just make it simple. Hey, oh, okay, 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 okay. I can do that. Actually. So, if uh... can we just write it simply, you know, so that a simple layman could understand? Well, the thing is, what the softs will want to do is say, <clears throat> you're not trying to understand on their level, right? So in order to not, oh. to, in, yeah, in order to not have them be able to go, oh, you're just not trying to understand, you have to say, okay, I'll sit here and you explain the yeah. sophistry. Oh my goodness, that is, that is so annoying. Yeah. Oh. 
it, it it'll explain some. It'll it'll crumble though. Just just watch. Either it's gonna either he'll eventually get something clear out there and we'll be able to all spot the error, or you know he'll just give up even trying to clarify it. So we'll just uh, we'll just see what happens. I can see something you could oppose, I guess. Um, something yeah, that I that wrong. Yeah, yeah, that tends to happen when we write these arguments out clearly. Yeah, I mean, premise premise two and argument two is just you begging the question. I'm not even. Well, I <laughs> yeah, like I don't even know how you're getting to P two. Bryn, do you actually feel confident that you understand what the first argument is saying? Yeah, it's just putting name the trait in terms of. Uh, mathematical induction so when we do mathematical induction what we what's say just is, tell me what p1 is saying right so what it's what it's saying is that if we can show that for some series if you add one to it that some you know like predicate holds call it moral value <clears throat> and we have at least one case where we have moral value then what we could assume is that that base case plus any amount of trait swapping is going to retain moral value. Yeah, I think that, that's pretty much value. <clears throat> if one being A has moral value, okay, okay and yeah. if A with N trait swapped having moral value imply that implies that A with N yes. plus <laughs> why is it N plus one traits? Um, why isn't it just that's, plus that's, x that's, traits? That's that's called. I mean, uh, it's like the minimum. Like, yeah, that's called like an inductive hypothesis. Basically, like, so, for example, what you could say is, um, you could make the inductive hypothesis that if you have some number that is equal to or greater than zero, that number plus one is also going to be greater than or equal to zero. Is a, variety of ways you could prove that wait no 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 but one second what i want is just to understand this here if one being a has moral value i'm following so far and it's a conjunction if a with n traits swapped having moral value so n that's just any random number right a um, what yes yeah with some with some amount of traits swapped having moral value implies that a with n plus one traits swapped still have has moral value yeah has, so has moral value. so so, so why why are we using the language of n plus one why aren't we just saying like so let's just isolate the proposition that's weird here so a with n traits swap here so this right here a with n traits swapped having moral value. So that's just some being in the process has value, right? Because that's yep. some being with traits swapped implies that A with n plus one trait swap still has moral value. So that I think is just going to be false, right? Because it's not the case. It's not the case that like, so what if we write this the way that, you know, uh, we would normally write it if we just say, you know, like, if a prime, um, I agree, it's false. Uh, it's yeah, but yeah, yeah, one, yeah one, that, well, there's a, there's an easy way to write this that just would make sense, right? Like, if uh, so, one second, let's just uh, <clears throat> if a prime has moral value, then a prime prime has moral value mm -hmm. so this is this is the same thing right right mm -hmm. i'm asking the other guy though i know you i know yeah blame yeah yeah it's just, yeah, yeah. It's okay just, like we n the number doesn't really matter if it's like uh yeah i'm one. just well uh, right but the reason i'm rewriting it like this is because this is how i think about it and i want to see if i can put it back in my language and whether once I do that, you'll say me that I'm, you'll say to me that I'm missing some kind of mathematically important thing. Now it sounds like you're saying I'm not, and that that language is the same as the language above. So a with n trait swapped having moral value implies that a with n plus one trait swapped still has moral value. That's just the same as saying if a prime has moral value, then a prime prime has moral value, right? I would say like 
mathematically speaking, the by with n is more general, and like uh, yours is just a specific case. But uh, sure. Like okay. from from your from just a a prime and a seconds, uh, a a prime prime. Like you wouldn't be able to conclude that it's true for whatever number of traits you swap. But it doesn't really matter in that context, I think. Um, mm. wait a second, but um, okay, so let's. Wait, but the limb, like what what Isaac's putting there is just the inductive case. Yeah, I mean, um, oh, oh, it, it's 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 not the general case, right? Like we would derive the general case yeah, yeah. from having a base case. So, at this point. but so, he's given the inductive. Well, case let's now. let's just be clear. So, if we'll just do it till we get on the same page. So, let's say a prime is human with cow tail, right? So then a prime prime. You're saying that there's different things that a prime prime could be. It could be like maybe it's human with cow tail plus cow i or or maybe it's human with cow tail plus cow heart right like those are both um one one trait removed from human with a cow tail is that the idea like a prime prime there could be multiple things there so you want something more general no it's it's like just me being a bit pedantic and like uh you, okay well let's you know the but uh, yeah, yeah, we can just forget it and like, well, uh, work, work look, what you're there's it's just we need to be clear about what we're saying. So with okay, so a look n all of the numbers n are numbers of traits that are within the trade equalization process, right? So that's let, I'll just walk you through what the potential problems can be here. Is n literally any number or is n uh, restricted to the numbers that can exist within the trade equalization process. So that is to say, if the trade equalization process is five steps, can n be six? Mm. I mean, uh, you can just define the sequence to stop at five. Or okay. At yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. That, that, that's that's fine. I'm just ruling out the problems one at a time. Now, yeah, it, would be, now, it would be necessarily limited to the number of commensurable traits. No. Now, okay, nice. Now, I'm pretty sure this is just going to be straightforwardly false, but I just want to make sure I understand. Now, so a n, we're just going to say that that could be any of the beings in that process, right? It could be, you know, a prime. It could be a prime prime. A n is just some variation on a that exists in the trade equalization process, right? Yeah. And then a n plus one is just any variation within the process that has one further trait modified from a n, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay, so it's just straightforwardly false. <laughs> I mean, this, yeah, is, I mean, this is hilarious. I mean, so, well, that, let me let me point. walk let me walk through why, and I'll see if I can explain why. So, the reason that it's just straightforwardly false is that it could be that the plus one you change is the trait the value is based on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I mean, so it's like. The first syllogism is just like uh, stating so there is a trait because because you find you find a point where it's, it uh, isn't true so there is a trait. Well, one second. So let's just look at this. So what P one is saying is that well yeah let's go back to this now we understand this. If one being A has moral value and if A with N traits swapped having moral value implies that A with N plus one traits having swapped has moral value which it doesn't so that's false so. This is um, P and Q implies R. It's like the form here. Then A will always have moral value, whatever how many traits you swap. Um, yeah, that's my P one. Well, yeah. So I think that would I think that would be true, but there's a proposition there that's not true. Um, so, which is the Q, basically. It's not true that um, if A with N trait swapped has value, then A with N plus one trait swapped has value. But we could still grant this premise because it's an implication. We could say, if yeah. for some reason that were the case, and if, if A has value, then, um, let's just make sure we... Um, then IP3. A will have yeah. Then then just yeah, then it's basically just the conclusion is just all beings in the sequence have value. So yeah, we can we can we can grant that. Okay, but but, but let's but, is li yeah, is literally uh, like uh, negating the conclusion. Okay, so, so yeah, let's, it's a proof, it's a proof so, by contradiction. Well, let's just go through it step by step. So P two is P zero is true. So that's saying the given human has value. Okay. Yeah. P three 
PK. Where's PK K? PK is, is like when you stop, so the chicken, for instance. PK yeah. isn't true, so PN isn't true for any... Oh, so there's some being in the process that doesn't have value. So PN isn't true for any N. So that means that... So if there's some being in the process that doesn't have value, then um, uh, you, it's not the case that the whole that the whole all the beings in the process have value. Yes. Exactly. Okay, and let's also see the form. This is Q and R implies S, and that's wait what? Q and R implies S. Yeah, I P. didn't want to put a P because like if I would if I would put P again, P and Q, like, that would be kind of what? Okay, Q and yeah, R. Well, then P two should be a two Q. Is a Q. Yeah. yeah, premise two is actually Q. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You're okay. right. You're right. Um, I mean, and premise three doesn't even have any notation. So let's see. Okay. So it's not S. Not S. Okay. P two. Yeah. P two. P two is not S. <laughs> okay. Um, P K isn't true. So it isn't true for any n. Um, it's uh, not. Yeah. So. If there's a being that doesn't have value, then the whole set doesn't. Then it's not the case that every being in the group has value. Okay, so then let's just make sure PK isn't true. So yeah, there's some being that doesn't have value. Then PN. This is, by the way, this this fucking way of writing this is just so fucking aids. Yeah. Um. One second. One second. <laughs> one second. One second, one second. PN is yeah. So if PN, PN just means the whole sequence. Yeah, okay, so if there's some being that doesn't have value, then it's not the case that every being in the sequence has value. So therefore, either P0 is false, and there exists, and there a n that exists, there's an n that exists where PN doesn't imply, wait one second, therefore, either P0 is false, so therefore, one second, K isn't true. See, this is the, we need to rewrite this because this is just it's just too messy, dude. So let's just let's just rewrite this and make this easy to read. Okay, so here we go. All right, let's start with P one. <clears throat> if the given human has value, here I'll I'll even. Uh, I'll bold the propositions to make it easier. Um, if the given human has value and um, um, how do I, how do I write that in some simple language? P n being true implies um, and if any being in the TEP having value implies the next being in the TP has value, then um, what's the conclusion here? Um, all beings in the TP have value. <laughs> And this is one of those like take a note in how to like write an argument clearly kind of moments. But like, um, yeah. P and Q implies R. Okay, P two. Um, let's do this. Okay, so what is P two? P zero is true. Okay, so the given human has value. So that's going to be P, and then P three. Um, let's see here. P3. Um, PK isn't true. So PN isn't true. Um, so what's PN? So it's not the case that, um, all beings in the TEP have value. And since you've kind of muddled in a new proposition there, we'll just create a supporting argument. So we'll just go supporting argument for um, P3, and we'll go um, if there is a being in the TP that doesn't have value, then 
it's not the case that all beings in the TP have value. There is a being in the TP that doesn't have value, therefore it's not the case that all beings in the TP have value. And what's the nomenclature we're at here? Um, that's going to be <clears throat> not, oops, not R. Um, so the conclusion here has to be not R. Um, and then, um, okay, um, PQR. Well, I guess we'll use. Fuck. Where should we start down here? I didn't I want guess. to put P everywhere. That's. Uh, are you oh, sure well, how many? How many more props do we need in this first argument? Um, therefore, either that's false. Or not. Okay. Well, I'm just gonna start at at S. I guess P Q R. S. I might have to change this. Okay. Um, S implies not R. S not R. Okay, now back up to the initial argument. Um, P3, P4. Um, oh no, it's a conclusion. What? Okay, so conclusion. Um, okay, so therefore, either P1 is false or there is an n one second oh, this is so muddled um okay so fuck this is such a such a mess therefore either it's not the case that the given human has value or um well I mean, presumably you're just trying to say and or um, the other fucking proposition there, right? Like, I mean, if presumably the conclusion is therefore um, either not um, not P and or not Q. Like, is that what you're trying to say? Because that, that would make sense in virtue of the structure. Therefore, uh, either P0 is false, so that's the human doesn't have value. This is yeah. horrible writing. Is this yours, or is this from the sauce this directly? Mine. No, this is mine. <laughs> oh, God. Sorry, dude. This is really bad, though. Um, yeah. I mean, or there an N exists where PN doesn't imply... Okay, yeah, no, that's just saying that the Q is false. Okay. Or... Um, uh, it's like the negation of the N or, is like... Uh, so all of the it's not the case that um, wow okay one second now I'm, I'm seeing another problem here if the given human has value and okay um, and let's put it like that so it doesn't have to we don't have to embed another implication if, and any being then, <laughs> Avi, we've got some hilarious new sophistry. You should look in my inbox. I've taken a. I looked at it. Yeah, it, it looks like shit. <laughs> it's so it's so messy. We don't know what it's saying. Um, it. um, I'm gonna be listening in, but I'm gonna be working on the crasher thing while I'm listening. Um, yeah, okay. Um, holy shit, this is so AIDS. Um, okay. And uh, can you tell me at which step you are so I can see if I can, uh... uh I'm almost done, one second, just cleaning it up. Um... Oh, and there's another conclusion. Okay, just gotta get this last fucking conclusion. Yeah, it was to get rid of okay. like uh, one of the cases. Then, 
Um, okay, well, you actually just have superfluous information here, so you can just get rid of one of these premise, these conclusions, and just say, yeah. therefore, yeah. So you can just get like, <laughs> yeah, I, should... I, could, I could have go straight to the point here. Yeah, sure. I could have just well, said it, it would, it would be, it would be fucking way easier for everyone. Okay, therefore, um, it's not the case that. Um, okay, so then we'll go, therefore, not, um, what is that, not Q. Now, I think that'll uh, work. I need to, I need to just look this over. I just typed enter so I can see the, uh, the form and stuff. So firstly, just check the form. I think that's fine, though. Okay. Yeah. You you went. To, yeah. Okay. Yeah. P and Q. Oops. Why is my cap set? P and Q implies R. P not R. Therefore not. Q, so the form should be fine. Yeah, that's fine. Um, okay, uh, I'll just uh, just delete that so we're not cluttering up the uh, the thing. Okay, all right, here we go. So if the given human has value and any being in the TP having value implies the next being in the TP, can you can you please appreciate how much yes. nicer and cleaner yeah. this is now? Okay, <laughs> and it's even <laughs> bolded so you can see the propositions and where they're negated and stuff. If the given human has value and any being in the TEP having value implies that uh, implies the next being in the TEP has value, then all beings in the TEP have value. Yeah, I would grant that that's true. Although Q is false, right? Um, uh, yes. But but I, it's certainly true that if P and Q, then R, sure. Uh, the given human has value. I guess we're just on some system. We take that to be the case. Okay. Um, and then, like, on, on some system, as in according to someone's ethics, the human has value. It's not the case that all beings in the TEP have value, not R. Therefore, it's not the case that if any being in the TEP has value, the next being in the TEP has value, not Q. Yep, I would say that's a sound argument, and the conclusion poses no problem for name the trait. Okay. Okay, so... Isn't that just name the trait? That just is. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it is just name the trait. It's yeah. just a. It's just a. It's just a way of writing out name the trait. I. I. I don't. I don't understand how that saying name the trait. Um. Either the human doesn't have it's... value. Or... Yeah. I think it's just. I would... <laughs> yeah. The conclusion is just to say that there is a trait someone could name. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um. Like... Any being in the TP mm -hmm. having value in plus. Well, no, the thing that's not named the trait is I would, I, well, I mean, the whole structure is weird, but I would never use this, like, if one being in the in the process has value, the next being has value. Like, that's all fucking, I don't, I don't understand how that yeah, is named like, the trait at all. What I want to get the, to get to is, like, uh, non-Q in the end, so. Okay, can I, can I maybe rephrase well, what's, like, being said there? The what? idea with that, the idea with that entailment is that, um... I want to prove that there is a trait. If you it consider that you, that yeah. doesn't have moral value, yeah. If you if you swap like a morally irrelevant trait, then um, then it's not going to change the value. So all that's being said there is that there is no trait. Like that's what that uh, hypothesis. So, so well, no. The conclusion is that any being in the TEP, ha it's not the case that any being in the TEP having value implies the next being in the TEP has value. That's not the conclusion of name the trade. So I would never, yeah. I don't I don't know why we would ever say this is name the trade. This is just some other argument. I mean, is, now, I feel like it's kind of is because you start from a human and then you swap all the traits well, and you end it's, up with you, you might You might be able to say it's some related thing, but the conclusion is just not name the trade, right? It's like the conclusion is some other thing. Any being in the TP uh, having value implies the next being in the TP has value. That's not true, right? How is how is that name the trade? The conclusion of name uh, the trade is that, yeah, that on your view, denying the given animal moral value is going to produce a contradiction. The conclusion isn't any being in the TEP having value implies the next being in the TEP has value is false, right? Like, that's it, just not the conclusion. That's some other argument. It's not name the trade. For me, it shows that if you have a difference in moral value between two beings, then there is a trait between the two. Uh, 
Is that, that exists. It's, it's it, to proving the existence of you, a trade. You, you, you might you might be able to say that this argument is talking about similar concepts, but this is not name the trade. Oh this yeah, is a different yeah, I mean, argument. It's, it's it's close, but I agree. It's like it's not. Yeah, the conclusion is just some other thing. The conclusion isn't your view can only deny the given animal has moral value on pain of contradiction. The conclusion is it's not the case that <laughs> any being in the TP having value implies the next being has value. That's just some other thing. That's not name the trade. Do you agree or not that uh, the conclusion, as you wrote it, uh, is a uh, like uh, bijectional implication with uh, like uh, the proposition that uh, the, if uh... wait, why? Sorry, before we go forward, you understand this conclusion is not the conclusion of name the trade, right? I think this conclusion is equivalent. Have you have you looked at the syllogism? Have you uh, looked yes. at name the trade? So you understand the conclusion is therefore your view can only deny the given non-human animal has moral value on pain of contradiction. Where is oh, that? Okay. That's different. Like I mean, look, if you're yeah, gonna... yeah, I agree, I agree. Okay, yeah, for sure. Okay, yeah, okay, nice. All right, so let's move to the second argument then, unless there's something else to be said about this one. Yeah, it's it's more about the trade equalization <laughs> process, I guess. Okay, so let's try to understand this second bit of sophistry. All right, so All right. there's oh, no. there's argument one. We understand argument one is sound, but it poses no problem for name the trade. So if, okay, so more garbage confusing language, let's fix this up. So P1, if AK equals given non-human animal, then what, for all F? What the, what is F supposed to be? Uh, it's like uh, what I read in the above, like the Leibniz law. F left arrow. F, F, F is a property of X. Well, like, so, uh, so what what's being uh, said here? If if the give what about the given non-human animal? Like if uh, both being are equal, they share all the same properties. If both are equal, they share all the same. Is sorry, is P what what does P one of argument two say? Oh, and sorry, if you didn't see what I did there. Just so you under actually before we move to this, just with the previous argument. So we had this kind of weird, like muddled shit where like the second conclusion reasserts the truth of the first premise, and then it's it's like it's just weird. So what I did was um okay, so the first look, you have two conclusions. For who's who is that, Blame? Can you mute when I'm talking? Um you have two conclusions, right? So the first one is therefore um, either the PO is false. So you're basically saying therefore either Q is false or R is and or R is false. It should be and or technically actually. So there's a problem with how you wrote it there. Um, that conclusion I think is actually I think that argument's actually invalid because you used or instead of and or. I'm pretty sure. Let me just check that real quick. Um, check P. Um, P and Q implies R, P, um, not R, therefore P or Q. Is that, oh no, it's still valid, okay. You can use the exclusive R. Oh. Um, okay, now wait, just, just a second. Okay. Anyway, I used I used Andor, which also comes out valid, but I guess I should change it to exclusive or to keep. Oh, but then we got rid of that. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, if you look at that, the point is though, with your first conclusion, you say either P is false or Q is false, right? And then C two just reasserts, well, P is true, but we already know that from P two. And then you say Q is false, so you can just get rid of that double conclusion and just go directly to Q is false. So that's how I condense down the conclusions. Okay. And then you wrote in P3, K, that, that's, you know, you wrote, um, um, you gave a reason why R is, um, and I'm using the, the, uh, the, the propositional variables as I label them, not as you uh, label them. You gave a reason why R isn't true, but it's better to just say R isn't true and then just give another argument below as to why it's not true. Okay. So that's what I did. I just said if there's a being, in the, and I just included your reasoning down there. If there's a being in the TP that doesn't have value, then it's not the case that all beings in the TP have value. If there's a being in the TP that doesn't have value, therefore it's not the case that all beings in the TP have value. Just modus ponens. Okay, so let's look at the second one. Do we do we have full agreement about all of that? There's no conclu confusion? Yeah, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> all right. So um, now if AK, the given non 
equals the given non-human animal, then, okay, so what are you saying about the given non-human animal? I don't know what you're trying to say there. If the given non-human animal, what? Uh, if, um, so AK is like a uh, human that we change all the traits. So it's like, uh, is uh, equal to, uh, to the non-given uh, animal, uh, to the given non-human animal, my bad, then they have all their properties are matching. Um, all of their properties are matching. It sounds like, see, this is yeah. where, this is where I sense, yeah. this is where I sense the sophistry coming yeah. in. Because, because said. you're, Ar you're, you're, two is where the sophistry you, yeah, you're talking as if there's two beings at the same time or something. So, so if, so AK is just the being in world in the final world? Uh, AK is, um... The being at the end of the trade equalizer. Well, right, because this is, this is where it's going to be, uh, like, that doesn't even make sense because you're doing some weird thing where you're assuming there's, like, multiple weird objects or some shit. So you're going to have to be able to make P1 clear here, right, just like we did with the previous argument. So a AK, if that's... Is that just talking about the last being in the trade equalization process? Yes. Okay, so what... Okay, so... That's the given non-human animal that we're talking about. So what about the given non-human animal? Uh, he <clears throat> shares all the properties with a uh, human that's been, go that's been through um, the TP. What do you mean he shares the properties with the human? That just is that being. When you're talking about the being at the end of the trade equalization process, that's the non-human animal. Yeah, but if they are the same, then they share all the same properties. What, what is he the same as? Himself? Yeah, he's the same uh, as himself. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, so so if, if the given non-human animal has the same properties as himself, nah, see, this isn't nah, gonna this isn't no, gonna I, work if they're would, if if you're trying to yeah, do a sophistry. Yeah, if you're trying to no, do if you're trying if I mean. if you're trying to do a sophistry where you're trying to create two beings here, good luck, yes. bro. I'm that's I'm I'm, that's I'm that's waiting. That's, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. That's what I was saying. Though for me, like there is still two beings. Like, well, no, no, no. I mean, let's just here. Let me let me just help you wrap your head around this. You want you want an image? So let me uh, let me see if I can find you an image. Okay. Um, veganism. Name the trait. Here. Here's a little trait equalization image. Okay. Can you open that on your computer? Uh, I'm pretty sure we're opening the same. Let me I see. I posted it in AY inbox. Uh, okay, those no, that wasn't the one I was about to post. So, what about that picture? So, World One Human Holocaust, yeah. picture ST, yeah. World it, Two. So, the world and the being in, wor in World Five, that's the given non human animal. So, what are you saying about that being? If it's identical, so I have, if that being is identical to itself, I can't see what, what problems are going to arise from something being identical yeah, to yeah, itself, yeah. but, you know, go yeah, ahead. Sure. Um, okay, so what I what I started, when I, what I went from is like from, it's a picture like from the, from your video. No, 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 no. I don't, what I don't, see, this is a sophist I, move I, right I, here. I, so, I, no, 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 I stop, stop. This, I mean, maybe I'm just stop, misunderstanding. Stop, something. stop. This is a sophist move right here, right? I don't know if you're being deceptive or if you've just had these people uh, put stupid fucking thoughts into your head. But what these people try to do <clears throat> is they try to look at that animation. Yeah, you just posted. They try to look at that animation and they try to say from there that there's some kind of metaphysical statement about multiple. Uh, that's all garbage, right? All of that is garbage. Mm -hmm. What we're, there's no, There is no way... To say that somehow because of because of that um, animation, which is a very useful animation, that name the trait is arguing that there's like two beings somehow in the last world, right? An easy way to think about it is just think of think of the circle on the right, if you really want to think about that, as like a reference for what the last circle is becoming, right? It just think of it like a like a, a reference. It's gonna what it's eventually going to become. Right. You can you can just think that at the end, you're just looking at two pictures of the same thing. Um, so now going uh, going back to what we were saying, what are you saying about the being in the last world? Right. Without trying to do any like sophist weasel tactics where you try to say there's two beings when we've explicitly told you, like, look, 
here's an easy interpretation of the trade equalization process. Human in world one, animal in world five, yeah, all the worlds in between are just, uh, you modify propositions from the first world to get closer and closer to the last world. What is what is the problem supposed to be in world five, right? The, what are you saying about the given non-human animal? So far so, we have, if it has the same properties as itself. So I agree 100% that if uh, they are the same objects, then there is no issue. What do you mean? Uh, what do you mean they? What like this is what I hate uh, is like yeah, you okay. you you people talk as if there's like you it's like if they are the same what the fuck is they what is they why are we talking about they you mean it yeah it is itself okay. so <laughs> so no problem so if an object is itself then uh, what exactly yeah because like. The, well, premise, the, premise the argument the that the object that, cannot, cause... like, you cannot yeah. uh, turn uh, the human through uh, the TP into uh, the chicken. Well, so, like, yeah. What are you talking? What are you talking about? Of course you can. You have the human in the first world. You have the animal in the last world. Every world in between is some alteration on the first until eventually you get to the last. And your premise one of your second argument says, if A K, which as far as I understand, that's supposed to be the being in the last world, the animal, if AK, and then I don't know what else you're saying. So are you telling me that at this point, now that you understand the argument, you actually can't even think of how to make a coherent um, oh. criticism here? Or do you want to try to explain this P1 if you still think there's some valid uh, validity to this sophistry? I kind of want to, can I explain like real quick the structure of what where I wanted to go with my big uh, no text? no I want you to no no it. I want you to interact with the actual argument not with a straw man of the argument created by sophists I want you to tell me what the problem is with a proper a proper emphasis proper interpretation of name the trade now I've given you a proper interpretation what you're trying to do is a weasel move where you take an animation, a useful animation, which I continue to use because it's very helpful, and you try to say that somehow the animation makes a metaphysical statement about like two identical objects existing. This is false. I disavow that statement, right? This is just some garbage that you're thrusting on me that I've never, never stated that I believe, right? Now, can you levy any criticism against a charitable interpretation or does your criticism rely on attacking a sophistic straw man? I agree, like, all this... Yes or no, like, please. I want, I want you to tell me, can you deliver a criticism based on the charitable interpretation? It's just a yes or a no. No? No? No. No, I don't now, think now, now, I'm, I'm noticing I'm, I'm becoming a bit frustrated. I don't want you to, I don't want you to uh, say I'm one second, trying. one second. I don't want, I don't want you to say no, just for fear of getting booted, right? Like if, oh, if, no, if, if, if there's a criticism, I'm happy to hear it, but it has to be a criticism of the charitable interpretation. I'm not interested in criticisms of uncharitable interpretations, right? So you when, when you say no, is that something you actually mean? Because I've had, I've had, I've had people, and again, I don't know if you're one yeah, of these I mean, people. I don't. One second, I don't know if you're one of these people or not. Because sometimes, um, you know, you'll get them coming in here pretending they're not part of that group, right? Like I had one guy who came in here. He ran sophistry for a while. I got him to say it's fine to Holocaust infinite disabled minds, and um, then later the guy said he just conceded because he thought he'd get banned. So I'm telling you right now, I'm I'm a good bit of frustration away from banning you. If you think okay. that there's some kind of problem with the charitable interpretation, I want to hear it. So give me an honest answer. Do you think that there is a problem with the charitable interpretation? Yes or no? Oh. Okay. All right. Uh, can well, I... in that case, well, well, wait. So is the second argument here just by definition attacking the uncharitable version? Yes. Ah, uh, okay. All right. Well, then I would just, I'd uh, consider, I'd consider it a non-attack on name the trade. So I, yeah, I, I, I don't I don't I don't have anything else to say. If you want to attack yeah. the uncharitable version, you can talk to like Bryn or someone who has the patience for that. I'm only <laughs> yeah. with with this stuff. You have to understand, Balaam. I'm at a point that like anything where I see law of identity, ontology, like any of that shit, it's like 
criticism of the actual fucking argument in a clear form I can understand is the only fucking thing I have patience for. But yeah, if you want to talk, if you want to talk about um, like how to how some attack on some like sophist straw man of name the trade or something, then yeah, Bryn or someone might do that with you. Yeah, I mean it's just completely uninteresting premise too. 